This is Dan Frank, uh, author of the books uh, One Week and T-Wall. I just wanted to give you a little update on uh, T-Wall is finally published. Uh, it's out now on paperback and eBay, available on Amazon. It's a story, obviously, it's about uh, Trump's wall on the border for, to start with. Uh, but it's, it's also about a family of billionaires and how they cope with uh, different things in their life. I've got a friend here with me today, Gus. I don't know if I can pan out here and give you a little shot of him or not. He, he's coming up through the weeds, Mr. Gus is. And he's gone. Anyway, he's getting out here getting himself a little exercise today. And, and Gus wants to give a shout out, I'm sure, to Sheffield from the different Russian channel. He enjoys watching Sheffield on YouTube. Anyway, uh, so what's Team Wall about? Well, it's about a family of billionaires coping with uh, a bunch of issues and trying to keep the family together. Uh, it does uh, entail quite a bit about uh, building a wall on the border. However, that's not the only plot to it. Uh, if, if all you want to see is border wall or here, uh, border wall stuff, if, if all you want to read about is the border wall, maybe it's not the book for you because it has a lot of other issues. T-Wall encompasses uh, how to deal with the North Korea process in a unique way. I, I thought this book was done a, a year ago. It's May, it's May 2018 and in uh, May 2017, I, I thought the book was done. I sent it off to the editor and uh, I'll let you get an image of Gus there in the background somewhere. He's over there. He's running. Anyway, I thought the book was done a year ago, and then come to find out, uh, I added three more chapters to it. Sorry, I don't have any voice today, so we're going to keep this short. Anyway, I added three more chapters, and uh, those three chapters mainly entail a couple of refurbished space shuttles on a mission to uh, Kazakhstan uh, to deal with the North Korean issue. Got a unique way of dealing with that. The book kind of hints at in this book. And in the third book, uh, T-Wall is the second book of a series. It's called the One Week Series. One Week is also by me. Um, there's a third and actually a fourth book planned. Uh, don't want to get into them yet and give away all those little secrets. But anyway, T-Wall starts warming up to the Russians. To the Russians. Uh, T-Wall starts warming up to the Russians with the purpose of resetting that relationship the U.S.-Russia relationship. Uh, we need a reset there, and there's a way to do it if we follow God. Um, T-Wall is also about a way to deal with, uh, it offers a plot in dealing with the dysfunctional Congress that's always deadlocked. In fact, just this week, somebody came out with a, a new weapon called uh, the Congressman, and uh, it, uh, it doesn't work and can't be fired. And, and, you know, that's a problem with our Congress. One of the subplots in T-Wall offers a way of dealing with that. Um, there's so much in T-Wall. I would hate to, you know, constrain it to just four things. Uh, but it's not about any one of them. They're just little episodes in the plot with all the twists and turns. I think I best just let you read it for yourself and enjoy it. Uh, it's taken me four years to write it, as did the first one. One week took me right at four years. And I want to say that, you, you know, obviously you can start reading T-Wall right away. And there's enough stuff in the plot uh, right away that, that you don't have to read one week first. It's, it's autonomous in that respect. It's going to catch you right up to what's going on. It, it covers different issues in one week um, compared to T-Wall. But you can buy T-Wall and start reading it, and you're not going to be left out or be wondering what some certain characters are doing or why they're doing what they're doing because it, it will make sense to you. Um, however, if we go back to the beginning of one week in 2008 when when I started writing that book, 
I was working up in uh, Middleton, New York on a pipeline. That's what I do. I work pipelines when I'm not writing. And uh, I was up there and I noticed in 2008, they had not yet done anything to reconstruct either of the towers that fell in the 9-11 disaster. Uh, here comes a crazy dog. There he goes. Anyway, and, and you know, that bothered me. So uh, one week starts out with this, uh, this thing, uh, by the way, we got the Illinois River right over here. We're at, I should have, I'm sorry, I apologize. We're at Pier Marquette Lodge on the Illinois River, just uh, north of Grafton, Illinois. And about, uh, oh, five miles downstream, the Illinois dumps into the Mississippi. And about uh, 20 miles on down further, the Mississippi and the Illinois merge with the Missouri, and the three of them come together right there. And that's right where I live, actually. Uh, so we come up here, or Gus and I did, and uh, he's, he's getting kind of tuckered out already. You know? But he still can get them trees. <laughs> he's going to get plenty of trees. By the way, Gus gives a shout out to Sheffield on the different Russian channel. Got to say that he loves watching Sheffield. Anyway, uh, when we started the book one week, I was working up there in New York, and I noticed they hadn't started rebuilding the towers that fell uh, from the 9-11 attack, and now they've since rebuilt one. Uh, but the book one week starts with this uh, in the prologue, and that's why you prologue, I should say. You should always read the prologues because they tell you important things. And the prologue in one week puts up this forth this issue from Hank, the protagonist. He's a radio disc jockey at that time, and he puts this thing out to his listeners. You know, what if one of the towers had survived? And he said, would that be the impetus for rebuilding the other tower? And a bunch of his callers call in and comment on different scenarios where, you know, they've survived when a spouse didn't or when what it meant for them. And what that was all about, I don't know if I ever said it in the book, but, you know, in, I'm, I'm always about Bible, trying to read the Bible into uh, the stories that I write. And the one thing I've noticed that, you know, in the Bible, we have uh, Jewish and, and Gentiles. We have Jews and Gentiles, Israel and Gentiles, however you want to refer to them. And uh, the Bible puts forth a thing for the latter days. And I think it's in Romans chapter 9 and follows up on into chapter 11. Uh, the word talks about in the last days that God is going to bless the Gentiles to the point of provoke, provoke, he's going, God is going to bless Gentiles to the point of provoking Israel to jealousy and redemption and that's God's plan to redeem Israel in Christ and uh, when I put forth this idea about one of the towers surviving and that being the the motivation then for erecting the other tower I was thinking about this construct in the Bible that uh, that God would use uh, Gentiles to have an um, impact uh, Jewish people in Christ. In other words, to bring Israel to Christ, which most uh, Jews do not worship Christ in any way. They're, they're in the Old Testament, an eye for an eye, uh, the Septuagint, as they call it, which was the original, I think, five books of the Bible. Uh, and, and I really thought the, at that time when I started, I always say, that the, the main reason to write is that the writer would get clarity. The writer is always the be biggest benefactor of his work. And, and when, I, when I read that and uh, understood it at my level in, in back in 2008, I thought, well, this is, this is on the Gentiles then. But now here we are 10 years later in 2018, and I've done a lot more study on this issue, and I think it's it's mutual. In other words, whatever God is doing with Gentiles at any given time, it really isn't, he's doing it with them, but the purpose is to bring about something in Jews. 
and vice versa. When we look back in Old Testament times and the things that God was doing with Jews back in Moses' day, he was doing those things to bring about, a, make a difference in the lives of Gentiles. So one is always impacting the other. So I got to admit I had it a little bit skewed back in 2008 when I started writing one week. But as we're finishing up T-Wall, I think I'm right on track with it. You know, they get, you know, God is doing things in Israel to make a difference in Gentiles and vice versa. The things that God is doing in Gentiles today, he's doing to make an impact in, um, in Jews and Israel. And you, you'll find this in my work. I deal with two numbers, the number two and the number seven. Uh, one week is just saturated with the number two. And as well, it continues on in T-Wall. You'll find pairs of everything. However, as we go forward into book three, we're going to start talking about the number seven. Because we think that, you know, when God tells you not to live together but to get married, or God tells you to to read your Bible twice a day, morning and night, study to show, show thyself approved, and you'll have good success. Uh, and, and people scoff at that. But here's the thing. See, they're looking at just that situation, and they say, well, what does a piece of paper mean that I get married? Well, it may not mean that much to you at that time, but you have to understand, God is using that piece of paper, that marriage and that obedience to go on and accomplish something else in another people at another time. And he's using your our, he's using our obedience in these issues to bring those other things to pass through a spiritual connection. It's quite interesting. I'm not going to tell you all about seven. In fact, you, I'll tell you, you're not going to find out about the number seven in T-Wall. You won't, you won't read about the number seven until we get into the third book of the series. Hopefully it won't take four years. I'm retired now, so I know it won't take four years. Um, however, just, just let me say that in T-Wall, particularly in the end, you see the character Hank, who's the protagonist, he's uh, cozying up to Russia a little bit. And you think, well, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to be friends with the Russians? Well, the bar Bible says that you should do good works unto your enemy. And Russia has been our enemy since forever. Uh, and if, there, if we want to come out of this thing the way God wants us to come out, and, and doing it God's way is going to bring a blessing to the Jewish people. That's the way the Bible works. A lot of people don't get that. They think the, the things in the Bible is all about me and now. Not at all. You know, God wants us to be obedient in the Bible because he has a purpose for us far beyond this immediate situation that we're in. In fact, if you're a Gentile and God is moving you to obey in some area, he wants to use that to impact Jews. And there's more this gets on the edge of that seven and I'm not going to go into that I, I will in another video I want to keep this one short uh, mainly because I don't have any voice but I'm just glad to be out here today with my friend Mr. Gus and uh, hopefully uh, you'll read T-Wall I think you'll be blessed by it I know I was blessed in writing it and uh, I just uh, thank you and please enjoy it and it's, it's at twall.com, and you can find it on Amazon. And we're going to try to, uh, the thing I always wind up doing to produce 400 pages of fiction, I always wind up writing 400 pages of nonfiction. So what I think I'm purposing to do at this point, I mean, we just published T-Wall, 453 pages. There's 400 pages of of nonfiction sitting on my hard drive where I work through all these issues out here. So Mr. Gus is out here. What is he doing? Uh, he's getting into stuff. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to try to do with these video updates 
is get into some of those issues that God's been dealing with me on, on uh, why we need to be obedient, why we need to be in that word night and day so that we'll have good success. The success God's talking about isn't just the success of today. It's the success of tomorrow. The success, it's the success in other peoples and other times. I mean, uh, it's really intense. Hope you'll stay with us and enjoy these little videos. Dan Frank and Mr. Gus here. You got anything to say, Gus? Oh, he wore out. <laughs> hey, Chef Bill, on, good, on that different Russian channel. Enjoy you, buddy. Thanks.